So Canon just announced the EOS 1DX Mark III, and to be honest, the announcement kind of has me scratching my head. What's good everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer and cinematographer, and today we're here to talk about the 1DX Mark III and actually why I'm kind of disappointed with this announcement as a 1DX user and a longtime Canon fan. But before I get into that, I'm pretty sure you guys want to know about the specs, so let's dive right into it. So let's start off with the new image sensor and the new digit processing sensor that the Canon 1DX Mark III is going to get. Yes, this image sensor and new processor is supposed to allow us to have higher ISO efficiency, meaning we are going to get cleaner images at higher ISOs. And this now allows for HEIF or HEIF image files, the high efficiency image file, which is going to basically kind of replace JPEG. So it's gonna give you 10 bit stills without having all of that raw file size, which to me kind of makes me again scratch my head because if you're getting this camera, you know what the file sizes are all about. But in addition to this new image sensor, we know the 1DX series is all about speed and this camera is no different. You will be able to attain 16 FPS using the optical viewfinder and up to 20 frames per second using live view mode. Similar to using an electronic viewfinder if you are a mirrorless user. So you're kind of gonna be looking at the back of your camera, shooting whatever you're shooting if you want that 20 FPS, and we have to see if this is actually going to hold up in real world when the camera is released. In addition to all of that burst rate, we're supposed to have a new autofocusing system on the 1DX3 as well, or should I say improved. Canon is saying in their spec sheet that the 1DX Mark III is going to have 28 times the resolution in the center of the 1DX Mark III's autofocusing system, as well as some improved algorithms when it comes to the autofocusing system, allowing for better tracking. In addition to that, we also have one of the more major announcements on the Canon side, which is now allowing for 4K video at 60 FPS, 422 at 10-bit, with finally the ability to record Canon Log. We also have, kind of my, to my surprise, the ability to record internal raw video. And all of this can be done on the new dual CF Express card slots, so we're going to have that increased buffer capability as well, especially when it comes to that burst rate. And with respect to the communication side of the camera, we have built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth, and built-in GPS, as well as a new adapter that Canon is also announcing for extended Wi-Fi range. And lastly, we have a new autofocus button, which Canon hasn't said much about, and some backlit buttons. That is the majority of what the 1DX Mark III is going to offer, and we have to see if all of those specs stack up on paper as they do in real life. That being said, my final thoughts are simple. I am a 1DX Mark II user. The 1DX Mark II is a fantastic photography camera. I've never had a complaint on the photography side. It's only been on the video side. But here's my thing, Canon has the entire market in its hands, and I feel like we're finally just getting things on the 1DX Mark III that should have been there in the first place. Things like Wi-Fi communication, which were out in 2012 on the 6D when the 1DX Mark II was released ahead of the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and did not come with some of those features. And as well as things like C-Log and 10-bit video, things that are now standard in this world of photography with a lot of these cameras out here, we don't really have. And along with this video update, if I'm gonna end up dropping $6,800 for a new 1DX Mark III, then I might as well keep my 1DX Mark II for all of my photography needs because it's a great photography camera and then get an EOS Cinema camera or a Z Cam, which can shoot an 8K if you're going Z Cam or 5.9K if you're going to go with an EOS Cinema camera and have even more flexibility when it comes to my frame rates and my codecs and everything I really want. Even my 5D Mark III right now is shooting in 14-bit RAW. So while I think this is going to be a great camera if you're not really a 1DX Mark II user, if you really want C-Log, I think it's also a great update. That's what I was waiting for. But part of me feels like they're holding back something 
in this camera because they have something planned for a mirrorless pro body. That's just my thoughts. I'm not too sure how this is really going to go. I would love to hear what you think about the Canon 1D X Mark III. I'm not really too impressed as it is. I think Canon really should push innovation and really show the company that it is with all of its market share. Anyway, I thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those post notifications if you already have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. The links are also in the description down below. If you're ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just wanna give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.